as I was saying, you know, the spirit of the farm stand was to not be intrusive. And that one certainly is. The neighbors across the road have blackout curtains in their bedrooms so that they're not kept awake all night. Uh, I don't know if it's coincidence, but this is the first year in many that we haven't had an explosion of rats in the spring. Uh, and there's also the safety issue that the other people brought in. Uh, that's been a big concern. And you know, I agree with the woman who just spoke before me. We've been down this road for years waiting for Hanover Farms to comply with the simple laws. <coughs> and so far they have not shown an inclination to want to obey the zoning laws. I don't know why anybody should be expected different behavior now. I mean, there's plenty of, there's a couple of businesses that are act, operating well within the law that business is being taken away from. And they're adhering to the law. There are stores in Phoenicia that are selling the same products, but they are in an area zone for a, a business, a store. And Hanover Farms has been operating as a 24-hour market, not as a farm stand. Uh, and Al, for years, has talked about he knows of eight or ten other places he could go. And why hasn't he? There, you know, he, there's other places that are vacant that are zoned for 24-hour store if he wanted to. Uh, but. Mount Tremper is not one of them. It's a residential, and uh, for me and my family, we find it detrimental to you know, our quality of living there. Uh, uh, other speakers before me, I think, had good points, like I said, about the safety issue. That's a main concern also. Thank you. My name is Eric Hansen, I live in Shandaken, and I don't know what variances I was asking for, but one of the considerations should be hardship on the employees who have been laid off and need, and need jobs in the area and they miss their jobs sorely. And I'm just asking that that should be taken into consideration too. two weeks ago regarding Hanover Farm Stand. I sat through the meeting listening to everyone pleading for the farm stand to be opened. Most of their reasonings were based on the fact that Al and Alfie are good people and fine neighbors. These are all facts that we know, but it did not touch upon the reasons why the variances should be granted. I really don't enjoy pe speaking publicly. As words never form properly. Most people speak from their emotions. I listen to all the heartfelt <coughs> reasons about how important these men are to our community. More importantly, this farm stand represents the ability for all of the communities in the surrounding area to shop local. Local businesses are what make our communities thrive. I'm not talking about all of the New York City traffic that local businesses bring in. I'm speaking of the locals being supported by the local businesses. The farm stand employs about 20, uh, about 14 people that live in the surrounding area. There are fair employers that pay fair wages. I know this as I am an ex-employee, as are my children. I left to open my own business with their encouragement. I do miss the ways of eating my way through the farm stand every morning, but my calling was elsewhere. But their ability to keep employees for long lengths of time showed that they care about the people they hire and work with them to round out the days. Another way this local business supports the community is by buying local, to make it more convenient for the customers. They support local farmers, big and small, by purchasing the local produce and selling it in their farm stand. Potatoes from Delaware County and Schoharie, strawberries from Sobeties, Corn, squash, broccoli, cauliflower, the list is endless. I was excited one day to see a box full of Concord grapes from a local homeowner brought in and put out for sale. 
Apple season is an exciting time for most families, as the variety of apples Hanover Farm brings in is amazing. With requests for local ranch, rhubarb, horseradish, all creates an income for someone, which then became a supply for someone else. This is good for all of us. We all spend our winters driving to Kingston, shopping for veggies, longing for spring and the return of our farm family. The gas and time wasted becomes more frustrating when the groceries don't stay fresh for the week and the variety is lacking. Has anyone seen the price of leeks? $1.99 each. Rhubarb, $4.99 a pound. It becomes a strain on a community that struggles to thrive through an economy that does not provide for all. Hanover Farm has produce at reasonable cost so that our locals can afford to eat well. If I want to buy local produce now, I would have to drive through three counties to be able to purchase the types of food I need for my family. Hanover Farms has it all in one place. There are many reasons to give the various system farms now. Local business is the most important. Locals are the bread and butter of our community and of any business. There's no business that supports its locals the way Hanover Farm does. We need this farm stand to thrive in our community because we then have the ability to prosper. It's a circle of life that we all live in. We never know what tomorrow will bring. House fires, car accidents, people leaving us without warning. There's so many things that are more important than bickering over who is right and who is wrong. It's time for no one to be right or wrong so that this issue can be settled. Let's work together to open this farm stand so that everyone wins. The farm stand, the town, and most important, the people. And I would just like to add, listening to all of this tonight, um, as far as the traffic, when I worked for Hanover Farms, yes, there was a lot of traffic there. But I now work in Margaretville. They have a blinking light, red on one side, yellow on the other. And every two weeks, there is an accident there. I have lived on Route 28 my entire life. I've grown up here. They lower the, the speed limit. People have to be aware of driving and not be texting and doing all sorts of other things. Um, there's never going to be a safe way to have a business on a highway no matter what everybody does. And not giving a variance for the reason of the traffic control is not going to make any change to how people drive on our roads. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak at this time? Okay. All right, well then we will uh, continue with our meeting. Um, we'll continue the public hearing. Uh, we won't close the public hearing at this point, but we will move to the regular portion of our meeting. Uh, if uh, you guys want to stay for that portion, you're certainly welcome to do so. Uh, this is not the public hearing portion of this meeting, so um, you're welcome to, to <coughs> continue to stay. Uh, Julia, for uh, for this case, we have some correspondence from the Ulster County Planning Board and from, well, let's start with that. Can you read that, uh, determine that uh, recommendation from that, please? The first one, uh, yeah. Kind of a front area variance summary. This is a request received by the Ulster County Planning Board on April 28, 2014 for area variances to legalize an existing structure and associated accessory structures located 5200 Route 28 in Mount Tremper within the R1.5 zoning district. Following materials were received for review. Application for variances, area computations, Email from Larry Linsky dated 4-28-2014, listing variances required. Referral memorandum from the Shandaken Planning Board to Shandaken ZBA dated 4, uh, April 3, 2014. Town of Shandaken ZBA minutes for regular monthly meeting dated 4-16-2014. Recommendations. The ZBA in considering area variances is required to measure the variances requested by balancing the needs of the applicant against the needs of the community. The UCPB is concerned that several of the requested variances are likely to operate to the detriment of vehicular and pedestrian safety, both along US Route 28 and on site. The objective for the ZBA working with the applicant and the New York State Department of Transportation is to achieve safe access. Parking areas will need to be re-examined 
and parking will need to be removed from areas where sight distances are obstructed. Channelized access with curbing and asphalt to New York State DOT standards for commercial driveways will also be necessary. Additionally, if any parking, landscaping, or material storage is proposed in the state right of way, a use and occupancy permit will need will be need will need to be obtained from the New York State Department of Transportation. In examining the variance request, the UCPB suggests that the ZBA consider the variances substanti substantiality against the bulk requirements for uses in commercial zones located along the US Route 28 to give it a clearer picture of the degree of significance of the variances being requested. It is also apparent that the site plan approval will be needed to accommodate the changes in the project. Toward that end, we strongly urge the planning board and the ZBA to work together to ensure that a safe and attractive site is the ultimate outcome of this process. Required modifications. The ZBA working with the planning board and the New York State Department of Transportation will need to develop safe access and adequate parking for the site. Particular attention needs to be focused on the location and the amount of parking as well as the need to allow rel relatively high speed traffic onto the site in an efficient manner. Only if a site plan is developed that provides for a safe environment for both vehicular and pedestrian traffic while at the same time meeting New York State Department of Transportation's requirements should the minimum variances necessary to establish said site plan be granted. This is signed by reviewing officer Robert Leibowitz, principal planner. Thank you. Um, I wasn't too worried about the ZBA working with our own planning board, um, but I uh, wanted to talk to New York State Department of Transportation uh, because they were CC'd on this. And I did uh, call uh, David Corrigan, permit engineer for this region, and ask him about um, what was required. And he sent me this communication, uh, which you guys have. Uh, I'll read it now into the record. Tom, as for a discussion, in order for Hanover Farms to initiate the highway work permit, they will need to supply me a site plan prepared by a licensed professional. At a minimum, the site plan shall include building and parking locations, proposed access points, Here's two reference markers, posted speed limit lane, and shoulder widths for Route 28. Once I receive the site plan, I'll be able to review and issue comments based on what is proposed. If they have any questions, please have them feel free to contact me directly, uh, Daniel Carver. Um, and I pass this communication on to our attorney who passed it on to uh, Leonard Thompson. Yeah. I didn't pass the specific. No, no, the, 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 the intent. His name is David Corrigan. Yes, David. Not Daniel. Okay. No, David. Did I say Dan? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, David. David M. Corrigan. Is there any other, is there any other correspondence that we received? Um, I have a correspondence. Um, I want to make sure this is written to Al, building check Al. It says, I wanted to attend the meeting. It says, Dear Mr. Crescenda, I wanted to attend the meeting last night about Hanover Farms reopening, but was not feeling well. I am opposed to the town allowing the reopening of the stand at the location for the following reasons. Number one, this is not a safe place for their operation. There has been many accidents already, and it is only luck. No one has died. Number two, Farm stands are not supposed to be intrusive to neighbors. That one is. The noise and lights are very disturbing. We also have a rat problem that happens during their period of operation. This is the first spring in many years that rats did not show up in May. It hurts other businesses like the stores in town that are operating within the law. Hanover Farms has never given any indication that they will in the future follow town laws. We will, in my view, be back in court with Hanover Farms very shortly. And number five, they say there is eight to ten places they could move. So 
let them move to a location that it would be legal, why allow them to break the law by changing the law? And maybe the same fellow that was just here. It sounds, yeah. it sounds like that. There, it's not signed. I just have welds. Oh, excuse me. It, Ted. Yes. Ted then. So there's no other correspondence beside that? No. Oh, I thought we did that last time. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that just came back. Mr. Chairman, I've been told that there was a referral from the town. Yeah, we we're just getting to that. Okay. Yeah, um, we did receive a, uh, a referral from uh, the planning board. I thought we had read this last time, but uh, dear Chairman, the planning board, the, planning board uh, the planning board of the town of Shandaken has received a referral in reference to the Hanover Farms agenda and has elected not to take any action. Sincerely, Kathy Jordan, uh, co-chair, town of Shindick and County Okay, uh, any discussion? The points that we would Well, I mean, at this point in time, we had essentially, I assume, all the public input having been submitted, and the uh, input from the applicant, at least uh, ev the evidentiary input at this point. Uh, we are free to begin the deliberative process. Uh, and uh, essentially, uh, as you all well know, there are five area variances being requested. And uh, we should go over uh, the legal requirements uh, and considerations for the grant of uh, those variances. And I'll just read them to you. Uh, and then I would suggest after after that's done, then you can you know go through the board and begin to have your discussions about this. Does that sound like a plan? That sounds fine. Okay. So uh, there, two sixty seven B of the town law. There are uh, uh, five factors, and then one additional provision you must consider. Uh, the five factors for the grant of an area variance are whether an undesirable change will be produced through the character of the neighborhood uh, by the granting of variance, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant uh, to pursue other than going the area variance route, whether requested area variance is substantial, whether the proposed uh, variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood or zoning district, and whether the conditions in the, uh, and whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, which uh, factor shall be relevant to the decision but shall not necessarily preclude the granting of an area variance. If you're in self-created hardship, if you remember, does preclude the grant of a use variance, but not a hearing variance. So those are the factors that you have to uh, uh, gr uh, grapple with. And it's the, the overriding question is whether the uh, benefit that is approved to the uh, applicant is outweighed by, the, uh, by other uh, issues. There's one other provision in the law that, that in particular here, I think you need to, to be aware of because subsection 267B3C uh, uh, says the Board of Appeals in granting area variances shall grant the minimum variance that it, it shall deem necessary and adequate and at the same time preserve and protect the character of the neighborhood and the health safety and welfare of the community. So health, safety, and welfare is within your uh, jurisdiction. I mentioned that tonight because the thrust of, of I believe, the uh, county's comment and uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, safe access and adequate parking uh, is, goes partly to that issue largely to that issue, and um, so there you go. Uh, if you 
you have any questions about any of those, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, questions? Questions? That's your job. Okay. Do you guys want to look at the variances individually at first, or do we want to look at uh, the, the criteria, see how these go by the criteria? Maybe going over some old ground, and I'll try not to string this out unnecessarily. But I do feel as though there are a few things that have been said here tonight that, that ought to be addressed. There's a there's a lot of misimpression, not not necessarily with the board, but perhaps with the public, as to the difference between a request for a variance and the site plan review process, which the town planning board undertakes. The letter that was just read from the highway department talks about needing a site plan. Of course, you don't get involved with site plans. You get involved with variances. The safety and health issues that have been referred to, we determined here earlier that there is no parking variance required in this particular application. The variances that are required are one foot on a side yard and You've got buildings uh, closer than principal buildings, and they're close to the highway. These are all situations which existed uh, before the whole controversy began. So this, this whole concern about safety, which certainly is legitimate, um, is, in my mind, not the zoning board's primary function. The highway, to the DOT wants a site plan. The Ulster County Planning Board wants a site plan. Everybody wants a site plan to deal with the health and safety issues. Site plans are the business of the planning board and not the zoning board of appeals. So these concerns about safety issues are certainly legitimate, but they are not necessarily the primary focus, I don't believe, of the zoning board of appeals. We are here for area variances, and none of the variances which have been determined to be necessary here deal with the highway and the safety of the ingress and the egress. The most substantial variance we're, we're asking for among them all is the one on the bulk area, also mentioned by the planning board. And, and let us recall that before a determination was made that we had to get involved with concern about the parking lot and the, and the parking spaces, the amount of the variance that we were requesting was only 900 and some feet. It was not a particularly large bulk and area variance that we were requesting. Then it was determined, well, okay, you've got to deal with the parking and the, and, the, and the parking area and the driveway into it, and all of a sudden that particular bulk area variance got much larger than we anticipated it would be. But again, none of that really involves the health and safety issues which are the proper concern of the site plan, which is why the DOT, when they wrote to you, mentioned the site plan, and when the Elster County Planning Board wrote to you, they mentioned the site plan. Site plan is the business of the, of the town planning board. And it is there, I submit to you, that these issues really rest. Now, these required modifications referred to by the county planning board, uh, Mr. Walensky and I have discussed them, and I, I think we have a disagreement that happens. But within the, town, uh, the county's website, it does specifically state that a required modification does not require a supermajority. It requires a simple majority. And only a supermajority is required if you don't deal with the issues that they are bringing up. The issues they are bringing up are site plan issues. So 
we, we've indicated to you before, and the public is concerned about the safety, and they keep saying, oh, gee, was the safety the safety? It's a planning board issue. It's not a zoning board of appeals issue. Whether or not they should get variances because they're, they're ongoing villains and all the rest of it is really also not necessarily part of what your considerations ought to be. We're here to try and get rid of all of that animosity, and we're here seeking the process in order to get past all of that animosity so this town and this community can move ahead in a constructive fashion rather than dwell on why they don't like a particular individual. We have time concerns. This weekend is Memorial Day weekend. A major portion of the business of the farm stand is gone. We still have to go before the town planning board. That will take a while. There will be public hearings. The rest of the season will be gone. The employees whose, whose unemployment benefits are running out will get no more unemployment benefits. The $120,000 a year that this business put pumps into the community conservatively will be gone. And so when you take, take a look at, on you know, balance, whether these variances are better, are, are so harmful to the community that they ought to be denied, that's going to be your decision to make. But the decision about whether or not to retain within the Zoning Board of Appeals continuing jurisdiction over this issue and not permitting it to go to the Town Planning Board is a death warrant, simply put. These issues are site plan issues. These issues belong before the planning board. And the reason we haven't been in touch with the DOT is we wanted to see what was going to happen here. This thing is now on a shoestring. And to get involved with, with that whole issue without knowing what's going to happen here, this, we don't have time.